So, uh, yes, my, my name is Simon. I'm from Karlsruhe in Germany. Uh, I'm one of the uh, backbone admins, uh, administrators of the network in Karlsruhe. And, uh, yes, Freifunk, what the heck? Uh, what is it? Um, so, basically, Fre Freifunk is a, sy a synonym for wireless mesh networks, at least in Germany. Uh, it's decent, uh, decentral organized, and there is basically a community in every city or in every region. And there's not like a huge, there's not like one Freifunk community for everything, but every city has our own. So I'm from Karlsruhe, so obviously it's Freifunk Karlsruhe. Um, there are over uh, like 50,000 nodes are participating Wi-Fi routers uh, in the whole of Germany doing some, some kind of Freifunk. And uh, what really makes a difference, it's uh, in the possession of uh, the community. There's no company behind it. It's absolutely non-profit. And basically, we're uh, an ethical internet provider. Um, you maybe heard of it, too. So Freifunk is based on the pick peering agreement. Uh, the pick peering agreement is basically a minimal agreement on what we all uh, shall do with our networks. So we are obliged to net neutrality. Everybody gives trans uh, free transit and transport of the data for everybody. Um, we use free, as many free standards as we can. And we uh, keep an open documentation about what we do and how we do it. Um, so uh, about Freifunk and Karlsruhe. Freifunk and Karlsruhe is actually pretty new. Uh, we are there since July of 2014. So like 15 years after the original Freifunk in Berlin was started, there are like over 400 nodes online in Karlsruhe, uh, 300 of them directly in the city of Karlsruhe, uh, which is a city of around half a million people. So um, yes, uh, and we have regular bi-weekly meetings and meetups at the uh, ZKM, which is the Center for Art and Media, uh, um, a media art museum in Karlsruhe, which you should really go to and visit. So this is what our, our meetups look like. So you get in comparison. Basically, this table is our meetup. And uh, they're like, this, is, this was like the opening meetup of the exhibition we are meeting in. So there are other um, groups meeting there, for example, the Fabrication Lab, uh, the ha local hacker space, and so on. Um, but we are one of the uh, yes uh, participants there. Uh, so what? Uh, uh, so um, let's compare Freifunk to the NYC Mesh. So uh, on a uh, on a technical basis, at least. So what we are doing. Uh, is a little bit different from at least what I have read about uh, NYC Mesh. We can talk about that later if I'm wrong, so co or correct me. Um, basically, what we're doing is uh, one large layer two um, per city, or at least for an area of a city. Um, and what really differentiates us is uh, the largest portion of, the connect of our connect nodes is not connected via a direct wireless link. Um, because uh, wireless backhauling is really, really complicated uh, in Germany because of laws and obligations and landlords not allowing like big antennas or small antennas on your balcony or the rooftop. Um, but we're getting there. So most of our network is connected via VPN. And uh, basically, we are running a, a layer two mesh protocol called Batman, better approach to mobile uh, uh, ad hoc networking, and um, all our gateways and all our uplink is sponsored by companies and institutions in Karlsruhe. Uh, so they are basically everything is in the city. There is uh, yeah no back and forth through Germany. Everything is quite local. Uh, we have our own IP resources and we have uplink sponsors in the city. And uh, since like three months ago. Uh, we launched our first like back, uh, wireless backbone node uh, on, a, on a rooftop. And all of our uh, working is highly automated with uh, automation like SaltStack, if you have heard of it. So uh, this is what the map of our network looks like. Like the blue, the blue dots are Access nodes you can currently use. The red dots are currently offline, and we have a few green ones 
new. Uh, and uh, these are the different, like, uh, layer two partitions of our network. So we have like one for the east region, for the western region, uh, north and south, and you, you get it. <laughs> and um, what I want to talk, I also want to talk about is our firmware, what we do uh, with our firmware, because uh, we have, uh, of course, when you do an open network, you have to do your own firmware. And we, uh, we use the Gluon firmware, which is the de facto standard uh, firmware for Freifunk. And um, it's developed in cooperation between a lot of communities in Germany. Not every community, but most of the communities. Um, and it's a relatively modern firmware and heavily developed. Uh, we use a really modern open VRT, uh, WT, um, prepared for the newest release. Uh, we use 802.11s as our mesh protocol on the wireless side. And it ships basically with an auto updater. So Every node is always up to date with the latest firmware, and uh, basically no one is left behind because uh, his, his router is stuck on an old version which is not connecting to the VPN nodes and so on. Um, the uh, Gluon firmware is uh, open, uh, open in mind, but currently pretty constrained to, how a fri uh, to the Freifunk setup. So we have support for the Batman protocol, we have um, support for the experimental Babel protocol, which is also a meshing routing protocol, but we have no BGP or OSPF support. You use, uh, um, but the communication and development happens in English, so feel free to participate. And um, it's very modular, so a lot of communities have their own modules. For example, we have a module uh, to direct nodes into, into the correct like layer two domain uh, on uh, on the basis, and what is really great is we have a lot of hardware that we support. So I, I suppose many of you know those routers. Uh, they, they are probably used by you too. Like at, at least the depealing the depealing one or this depealing one, uh, and also quite modern hardware. So this is great. This is what our firmware looks like when it's running. So we have uh, a node overview, um, what the node currently does, what kind of model it is, MAC addresses, what firmware that is, uh, like monitoring how, what the load is, how it's connected, how the mesh partners are. And uh, it has a really, really, really s simple setup mode you can use. Um, basically, you type in the name, you choose where you are, uh, you want to connect via VPN, and then you save it and you forget it and uh, put the node where it belongs. Um, yes, uh, what we are currently trying to do in the, in the near future, um, we're talking with uh, different sponsors in the Karlsruhe area to transport us to Frankfurt, where we can get even more upstream connectivity because upstream connectivity in uh, Karlsruhe is quite rare. And uh, so we can get our port at D6. I've, I've read you had also have a port at D6 New, New York, and Community X, which is a uh, community-driven internet exchange where basically companies donate their connectivity, and uh, communities like Freifunk, but also the Tor project, can get connectivity from the sponsors. We really want to expand our wireless network. Uh, our wireless backbone, um, because we want to get rid of a lot of the VPN connections, at least um, uh, in, in some cases where uh, the current internet situation is really bad. For example, at some uh, refugee shelters we have. Um, yes. Um, and we really need to find more developers for our Gluon firmware, because we really, uh, like, uh, running out of them currently. And uh, something I tried to explain, um, but I can't really explain because you can't really can't translate it, is uh, the, the, this word, it's Schlürerhaftung. <laughs> um, and I tried to put it in the front of the presentation, but uh, Schlürerhaftung is what made uh, Freifunk this big in Germany because basically it's the liability 
of the owner of the uh, internet connection uh, to go basically, uh, sorry? Yes, you have to secure the access points and if somebody does something about it, you're, li yeah, you're liable for it and you even have to go to jail if so something is because you're the owner of the uh, co internet connection, so Störerhaftung, but Störerhaftung is, most of it is gone now, so um, no worries. And yes, um, please come to GPN. GPN is our conference, uh, also happening at the Center for Art and Media in Germany. Um, and we have a dedicated Freifunk track on it. There are a lot of Freifunk communities happening. There are communities from uh, France also. Um, and there are also communities from France. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Um, I'll just pass this mic around. Yes, it is on. The light is on. Hello? Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Simon? Really, guys? Oh, cool. I'll pass the mic around uh, just so it. Oh, what kind of companies typically get involved? Sorry, what? What kind, kind of, of companies typically get involved? Get get involved. So you say they donate, right? Right. Uh, so, um, for example, hosting companies get involved. So we have a hosting oh, company uh, which uh, is a server host at uh, Karlsruhe who donates us uh, with internet connectivity. So, um, or uh, yes. Thanks. Um, so do you have any kind of link with uh, FFDN, the French uh, Federated Network of Independent as, um, ISPs, or is that like not really a no. thing? Well, we have talked to them, but there's not really a link to them. OK, OK. What is the primary motivation for somebody to join Freifunk in Germany? So the primary motivation is uh, to offer internet access without the liability uh, for it. So uh, because there are still certain laws in place where you, you can get liable for what you do over the, uh, your internet connection, um, then Freifunk helps you to get rid of it. And the other part is we are a heavily ethical provider, so we try to go Mm, uh, into like refugee shelters. Um, I don't know what the, what the word for it in English. Like uh, we have uh, like a women's ref refugee house connected. We have a lot of like churches and uh, yeah connected to our network, who provide internet access for those in need and maybe who can't afford a normal internet connection or a mobile internet connection. I'm not sure if you're saying liability or libel. Uh, I'm not sure what it means. Uh, in, but meaning like, but I don't understand what that means to a user. Uh, that, that I think that's what he explained before. The, uh, when somebody abuses the uh, access, I think yes. in, in Germany there are more strict laws for that than here. Yes, if, if you abuse your your connection, there are very strict laws about it and. Uh, what happens is the uh, who buys the access is liable for it, not the person actually using the internet. So, uh, if the laws are changing for this Storerhaftung, um, do you what do you think that will do to Firefunk? Uh, so uh, what we are currently seeing is we are currently shifting away from just getting rid of the Störerhaftung more to a uh, like wireless community ISP. So we have uh, we also see in other cities that there are sp like sp now spawning like wireless backbone points 
where you can connect to and um, get an internet connection to certain areas where may maybe the internet speeds you available are low or not even available. Uh, so like the, the it's shifting away from the VPN model in uh, more like to an wireless community ISP. I see. So you see the future of Freifunk as a community network that's largely physical. Yes, uh, we, we we're heavily working on that in Karlsruhe, but yeah. it's really really hard to do that, and uh, as there are very strict laws on what you can do on rooftops on your balcony, because uh, th there are laws where there's landlord in, in most of the times having something against antennas on your balcony or on your rooftop. So, yes. Can you talk a little bit more about the wireless backbone? Um, you know, how many access points have you guys deployed, or do you have main hubs, or what? What? What is the process of it for you guys now? So basically, um, we have currently <coughs> one access node deployed um, in Karlsruhe, which is at the uh, also at the center for art and media. Uh, they have like, uh, they call it a lighthouse. It's like, uh, I can show you, uh, afterwards I can show you a picture of it, uh, which is a very high point. And we have uh, ubiquity prism stations on there. And there are currently four connected nodes to it. So it's really, really small, but we are getting there because it's only three months old and uh, it's still in heavy development because we are still figuring out how, uh, to route all the IP packages around with the wireless backbone because we figured out the huge layer two approach we did with the VPN access stuff uh, just doesn't work. Hi, Simon. Um, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, just one question. Uh, I'm curious about your decision to communicate in English uh, in Germany. What drove that? Um, so for the for the Gluon Freifunk, uh, for the Gluon firmware, uh, it's because we really want to uh, get the firmware in onto an international level. So a lot of the development is happening in English to allow other uh, communities uh, to like s spawn. So example, there is uh, something similar to Freifunk now in Denmark or, or in the Netherlands um, and they profit from our work which is done in English. So uh, basically it's international language. English? Sorry? Those other countries also maintaining? Yes, they're also maintaining it in English. Uh, so. Our website is in, in German, most of the stuff is in German, but uh, all the software we use and all the documentation about our network, we try to do it in English um, or in English and German. Are you offering uh, any services bes um, in at, uh, 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 within Freefunk, like uh, a, um, uh, a DNS? Uh, in, like a local DNS? So um, there, uh, there are s services in the Freifunk network. For example, in Karlsruhe, we have a multicast stream of uh, a local community radio, which sometimes work. <laughs> and um, there, no, uh, otherwise there are not that many um, services. There's the uh, like the overview page of your node, uh, where is it, this one, which is accessible via, uh, for every member uh, or everyone connected to the network. And there is a DNS relay on every uh, Gluon node. So um, yes, the local DNS, as local as it gets. I'm just curious uh, what you get. Do you guys like have a lot of security testing for your firmware? Um, like what kind of security testing do you do for the firmware? Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious, sorry. No, sorry, I, I'm not that heavily involved into the uh, firmware, but I can check back uh, on that for you. Um, but what, on, on the security side, um, so the, the, our firmware has two operating modes. So there's a setup mode where there is only somebody's, uh, I see, they watch the live stream and now, now getting me the answers. <laughs> um, uh, th there's two modes on our, on our firmware, one setup mode where you can, uh, that you can only access via the uh, LAN network ports and everything is set up and after the, set, uh, after the setup, the node boots into uh, uh, like the normal working mode uh, where there's no ac physical access to any of the uh, set, set up stuff and the only thing you can really access is um, the uh, node page and there is a we call it collect uh, collect daemon, uh, which collects like metrics from every node. So we have a metric about what node, uh, what how many clients are connected to the node, what kind of bandwidth is currently used at the node, and so on. But yes. Uh, <laughs> So th now that you have th that you and uh, the rest of your city have run uh, a Firefunk network using uh, Batman Advanced and you've deployed so many routers, and now that you're also testing a backbone uh, node, uh, can you teach us something about uh, what what you've learned from trying both approaches and what you've learned by trying to mix them and maybe uh, yeah uh -huh. something so, like that. So, so uh, Batman Advanced uh, basically I can say don't do it. Um, it doesn't scale very well. Uh, that's why we have separated the city into different like domains, uh, we call them. Um, and what we are cry currently trying to do with the wireless backbone is to uh, utilize Babel as uh, a vector distance routing protocol. And uh, what we are also trying to do is like route the domains uh, of we have with, um, we currently have via the wireless backbone to uh, the basically uh, the location they are needed. Um, it's a complicated process. We still have not figured it out completely, uh, but we can report back on it like in a half a year or so. Okay, just curious, uh, because we haven't had that experience, so every, every city's experience can be a little different. I mean, we had, uh, you know, meshing protocol experience a little bit, but just curious what you, what you learned from it so far. So, yes, uh, so okay. B Batman doesn't scale. You want to have basically a Batman gate, a Batman, so-called Batman gateway, which is like the exit point of the Batman mesh, uh, as local as you can get it. So if there's, uh, for example, I would guess uh, if, if you can use it, and what we're also trying to do to, to use it like for a building, to get the network around in a building, and then get it uh, up on the wireless backbone. Uh, this would probably be a, like a, a good way to use it because Batman like scales uh, on a scale like t up to 50, maybe 60 nodes, and then there's a lot of background traffic because of the protocol trying to get its tables and um, all its data flows around the whole network, and this is congesting all of the network, and it, it doesn't scale very well. And it looks like you've looked into NYC Mesh a little bit. Can you can you tell us? Uh, can you maybe give us an evaluation of our network from the Freifunk perspective? Uh, what, what what do you like that we're doing? What do you not like that we're doing? So and uh, is there anything you could, from Freifunk, you could say uh, if you do this, you'll be really great. <laughs> I, I've, uh, well, I've looked on, on uh, like on what I can see on your website, and, and what is really great is. Uh, you're really doing like the, the wireless ISP approach to it, something we're really missing, uh, at least in Karlsruhe. In other cities, there's already like a wireless backbone. And, um, but there's like little information about how, how you utilize like a mesh protocol and how, uh, how you like route your network. And uh, there's no IPv6. <laughs> But okay, I have, no, I have not read, uh, read about it, yes. All right, I think that's a good spot to stop off. Thank you so much, Simon. You're welcome. <laughs>